Okay, today, class today, we're going to continue with Premiere. Um, at this point, you should have created your project, imported all your assets, your pictures, your video, your audio, in, uh, created a sequence at 1920 by 1080, put your pictures in there, and line them with your markers. So we have done a lot already getting started with this. Uh, the final steps um, are going to be working with some titles, credits, and transitions. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, and we're going to kind of jump ahead to some of the uh, other sections here. Uh, if we go to effects, that's where we're going to find the transitions. So once that window repopulates, we're going to go to video transitions. And there are a lot of different ones in here. You can choose whichever you like, starting with some of the basic ones. So um, all we have to do is drag one of these in between the pictures, and that's going to show that transition of one picture or as a video to the other. So this is cross-fading, right? We can see that. If we double-click on the actual transition itself, we do see that we can change the duration by typing it in, or we can come up to here, and you can actually uh, reduce that size. If you wanted to make that transition shorter to cover up less of your picture, you can do that. All right, so that would be applying that transition, and again, to play it, we can scrub through or press the play button here, and it's going to transition quicker. Um, if you want to change that transition, once it's applied, you can just drag another one on there. So like a dip to black, which is it's definitely more on the conservative side, but we can see it fading in and out. You do have other categories. I haven't messed with this one too much. You can experiment. These are kind of nice to see some of your traditional wipes. Um, or these box shapes so we can go into there that would be a box so it's going to make a box as it transitions now I'm not seeing actually the transition in here and this could bring up another good point um, my timeline here is yellow and then red so I'm not seeing that well, actually I did show that preview a lot of times if you're not seeing that preview happening and it's red we have to do some rendering so you can go and render this whole timeline by doing a sequence, render into out. So it's going to process this through. Uh, depending on the length of your timeline, it's going to take a little bit longer um, at some point over others. So we can kind of just wait for that to happen. All right, so now the line is turned to green and we should be able to see all effects applied uh, in doing that. All right, so let's say though that we don't want to wait for that whole thing to, to go. Um, so we have all these wipes and these are kind of some interesting ones. Radial wipe, maybe I'll apply this one, all right? So that line is red and we're not seeing our preview. So what I can also do is mark this as an endpoint. So it, it shades my timeline and then I can then mark an out point and now instead of rendering that whole timeline I can say sequence render effects into out and it should just be rendering this small section here which there it goes so that just did that section there so that'll save you some time from rendering the whole timeline alright so again so that's showing you how to apply those transitions you're just dragging it in between the clips you can change the duration of it by double clicking it and getting this window and you can kind of see uh, you could adjust that there or um, you press the OK then we can get on the box here and we can kind of manually change that um, and then that was rendering it so I would like to see a variety of uh, transitions it kind of just makes the slideshow um, seem a little more interesting as you're going all right, the next part we'll talk about is titles. All right, so at the beginning, um, we, I did advise to kind of keep a space for your title. Um, if you didn't and you want to move everything down, there are a couple tools we can use we haven't gotten into. Um, so this tool here, this track selection tool, will select everything going forward on the timeline. Now, what that, I don't want to move the audio or these other things though, so I could lock these. All right, and then so they can't be edited. And now I can just move everything forward. So if you did um, not have a space there, you know, you could use that track select forward and move everything ahead. 
or you could just simply zoom out. You can do a box select and then you can move it. Now, you may want to have your title over your first picture. I kind of think it's better not having it there so that we can really kind of foreshadow and kind of set the tone. Um, I guess that's up to you there. But what we're going to do then for our titles, we're going to go to graphics and we're going to browse. So they have a lot of nice presets here, right? All these here. If you click on the info and then I think you can preview. Yeah, so there's like a little status here. You can kind of see the animation of that happening when it does. A lot of these are animated. So you can scroll through and find them, but then you're just going to basically take this and drag it onto your timeline. Now I'm dragging it to a layer above it because I don't want to cover over and write over those images. And then I can just resize this, my duration, so that it um, fits in the beginning. Now the only thing is we have to be careful. Hopefully that doesn't um, give me enough time for my title, which it looks like it kind of does. Or maybe you do have it kind of overlap your picture a little bit, which isn't a horrible thing. So once you have this, the placeholder there or the template there, we can go in there. We can highlight this and we can put in our title. All right, and then we would have a nice animated title. All right, so that's your title animation. And then <clears throat> for your captions, I would like to have kind of a label for each one of your pictures. All right, maybe that one we could include as that because it's kind of going over there. So some kind of description of uh, what's happening in the picture. So to do that, we're gonna use lower thirds um, and uh, we want them to be in our title safe areas, it's called. So we're gonna use this thing here. By default, you don't have it there. So if we press the plus button and then just take this safe margin, we can drag it onto our toolbar, press okay, and then we can turn it on. So now we have our margins, all right? And we shouldn't have our text going beyond this inner line. So I'm just gonna start here. You probably could find some basic titles, but we can also just drag it, uh, draw a text box, and maybe we would start here, you know, we would type in our title, and maybe I'll say this is getting ready. Now my text, I can't see there, so probably my box is just too big. Yep, that's what it was. So switching from the text tool to the selection tool, you can then open that box up and then see it a little bit closer. All right, it's still cut off so that I can, I'd have to expand that. You do have all your font choices over here once you do that. So you have your font family, all right, and that gives you a nice preview of them. So I kind of like the bolder fonts. You could apply a stroke to it. You can do shadows, all kinds of crazy stuff with that. And then this one, really important, is your size. So maybe I do that and just realign it to that section there. All right. And you could, like all these pictures here for my project, I think actually are, I have a couple pictures of getting ready. So I'm going to just extend this caption so it goes over there all right and you could just re keep repeating for each one just you know if you have new ones you can just reselect the text tool and create that there if you do find that you want to reuse those texts that you already had instead of if you have a certain font style you could just select this one here um, we do a copy now when we paste this let me show you it's probably gonna happen by default yeah, it put it over that layer. So this is what's called using a source patch. So if I go here, if I press them here, all right, make those blue, and then I go in here and do a paste. Um, oh, I guess I have to turn that one off. There we go. So now it's only going to paste it on that layer. So you want to make sure if you're copying and pasting, you have those layers selected. All right, but then I could just go back in here and I can double click this and we could say on the slopes or something like that, right? And kind of give a little more description of what's happening. I know that's kind of obvious, but maybe I could come up with something better for that. 
All right, so I would continue there. And then those are gonna be our lower thirds. When we get to the end, where I want to have some credits. So at this point, um, I could use a text tool. I could go back to graphics and browse. And I think they have some credits in here, but, and you can see there, there are other lower thirds if you want to use some of these other ones kind of that are more graphic. And you can go in there and you can change colors on stuff, but you can see a lot of stuff in here. And I believe there is like a credits one, but it's got like all these like crazy titles and stuff. So like maybe we do a classic credits if you want to do something like that. And let's see, are these rolling by default? So no, they are not. So you could replace that stuff. For me, I think there's just too much stuff in there. I'm just going to start with the text box. I'm going to say photography by, you know, we'll put all the stuff in there. Um, in your class description, it should tell you um, what should be in there. Um, in the Google Doc for this assignment. I'm just going to kind of scan over to there and take a look at that to make sure what I had you put in there. So, and I'll put that in here as text. So, credits, credits, credits. Where? Yep. Music, your name, images. All right, so I'll just kind of put this in there. So, there's all our text. And then what you're going to do to make this roll, and we can just kind of extend this to here, you would fill in all this information. So you'd have music by your name, and then uh, images by whoever, and that's if they're not your own. And then I do want the DVC logo. I'll talk about that next. All right. So we have our credits and then to make them roll we click off of the text here but we want to have it on here and then we have this option to roll because look as soon as you have that box selected that goes away so you have to have the text item on the timeline but not in the um, frame here we just check off roll and that automatically makes them roll all right and then the DVC logo will be just like any picture. You'd import it into here, drag it to your timeline. All right. Um, so you'd get that all filled out, get all your details in there. And then the last part is to export this. Well, actually, as soon as we see a star at the end here, this asterisk, we want to make sure we save it because that means we've made a change since the last save. All right. And then to export, you have to make sure that this timeline is highlighted because if I go up here and do file export mm, it's not going to do anything so if I click down here and do file export all right now we have media selected and we get this pop-up want to make sure you have h264 selected under output name you're going to click in here and we're going to write the file name we're going to tell it where it's going and what we're going to call it so I'm going to go to multimedia and for me I have these under projects which is in my video category and my synchronized slideshow so I wanted to go to that same place and then let's call this Dusa slideshow final oh you know what and I know I have my audio muted so I'm gonna to have to go back and redo that so I'm gonna say save and let's see if I cancel. Yeah, so my audio would not have come through since it's muted here. Now it doesn't want to unmute. Oh, I have it locked. So now I can unmute. So now I can export again. Let's see if it held my file name. Of course not. Uh, and did not go to the right location either. So I want to make sure it's in the same place. We'll rename save and also check to make this as entire sequence because if you have those in and out points in there from doing the pre-rendering it's only going to render that part so we want to do entire sequence 
I always like to do maximum render quality and then export. All right, so this is going to go through. It's going to encode it. And then you can just upload it to YouTube when you're done. All right, so this is, as you can see, taking a little bit of time, but it's speeding up kind of quickly there. Uh, and then you should have an MP4 file, which you can check there uh, when you're done.